Good evening, all. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Yeah, very good evening. So the, very good evening, ma'am. Good evening. So give me a few seconds. Let me share the uh, PPT. Yeah. Okay. Good evening, ma'am. Yeah, good evening. Got it. So the slide visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So um, we are in our uh, last session, no? the final session of uh, corporate restructuring. So we have been you know, like uh, going through uh, the very most important factors and you know, like uh, the theories of the techniques the top management has to consider uh, you know, for uh, before going for corporate restructuring or uh, once they have planned for corporate restructuring. So uh, let me just take you guys a quick tour you know what we have seen. So we have seen this introduction, what is restructuring, and uh, yes, we have seen organizational restructuring. It means the overall restructuring process and financial restructuring only the uh, projects or the departments. So which has to be financially restructured because the company may be facing you no know, a loss or may have foreseen a loss in the future. So uh, to avoid the maximum loss happening or to avoid you no know, like any. Uh, insolvency happening uh, they would be you no know, like deciding for going to uh, taking up you no know, that the financial restructuring process so this restructuring may be applicable either for one particular project or for one particular event in the organization or it can be for the whole organization and uh, symptoms yes the first symptom is that there is some uh, unrest in the organization, people that is the employees are not following the, uh, you know, the, the core businesses is not being concentrated or employees not following their uh, supervisors or their uh, group leaders or their managers, uh, uh, you know, their uh, uh, the commands or whatever, you no, know, like uh, so there is you no know, like some kind of unrest or you no, know, like. Uh, uh, the system is not fine. The system is not like it's not systemized. So, or not like the company is facing losses, no? so the business is not going well, or the company may think, you no, know, like that we should, uh, they should change, you no, know, according to the present uh, industry scenario. So, whatever reason, so few symptoms may induce the top management to go on with this restructuring decision. So obstacles restructuring first it starts with the from the you no know, like first it comes from the employees side because many of them are not you no know, like um, they don't, don't have you no know, a good knowledge about what are restructuring processes because they may be having a fear of you no know, like their jobs or at stake and uh, they may fear you no know, like they are not ready to get adapted to the new change which the uh, top management is going to you know like put uh, uh, you no, know, like good friend, and uh, the other thing is you no, know, like uh, they are not okay with you no know, the system being changed. They may be working for you no, know, like a uh, uh, for a whole lot of time. They may be you no know, working on their own working style and everything. So they may be worried that uh, everything is going to change, and they are worried about their future and everything. And uh, the second thing is you no, know, like uh, the shareholders or the board of directors. So few of them may be you no know, resisting for this restructuring process. 
and uh, other than that the top management may not be you know like taking time or effort to explain what the restructuring process is what they have planned for in the restructuring uh, uh you know the restructuring time or restructuring process what they have planned for so what they are looking for as the result so this would have wouldn't have been you no know, like communicated properly communicated by the top management you no know, to the other uh, employees in the organization so from either side at the top management or the you no know, the remaining management uh, levels of management employees so it can be you no know, the mistake can be either side because of miscommunication or non communication and you no know, like for other reasons as, as well uh, there are you no know, like a few obstacles the company the organization may face before you no know, like going for restructuring so we have seen you no know, what are the what are the factors for successful restructuring what are the there's you no know, what are the steps to be taken what are the things to be followed to come up with a successful restructuring so before pre restructuring in the process during the restructuring and after the restructuring is done so what are the things to be followed and uh, preemptive restructuring is something that going on with you no know, like small small changes before the the main picture is shown the main picture is the restructuring so before that you are not just releasing the you no know, like a trailer or a teaser kind of a thing so going on with small small changes you no know, wherever the top management feels that a change has to happen so let the employees get used to these changes so that you no know, when the company goes on with the uh, the main picture that is the top uh, the restructuring process so they may not get agitated you no know, by this process so this is preemptive restructuring okay uh cash reserve prior to restructuring we have to know like the uh the top management or the you know like the the c uh, uh the c level uh, you know like uh, employees or the workers or the investors you no know, they have to be safeguarded the cash reserve of the company has to be safeguarded so this we have already seen what the measures to be taken before the restructuring process and oversee all cash transactions and payments so so the main uh, the reason why we are you not know, like the organization has to focus on the cash reserve and not the assets preservation you no know, before the restructuring process is because this becomes so uh, you no know, like uh, this cash and assets of the company you no know, like that would be you no know, like uh, becomes a um, uh, what do you say you no know, like easily accessible you no know, when there is an unrest in the company so that cannot be done uh okay uh the uh, coordinator you have to you know like uh, make me as a co-host because you no know, the i mean the uh presentation you no know, like uh, it went off okay so no like uh, that's the reason so we have to take no like uh, proper measures and uh, then there we have seen no like the types of restructuring processes there are many restructuring processes there is not techniques no which are followed by the restructure during the restructuring process okay so let's see a quick glance of no like the restructuring techniques one by one the first one is equity or oh no the first one is sell off so sell off is a sale of a business or subsidiary of the parent company to another firm outside the company outside the company's group not the sale is happening not within the uh, another come to the another company which comes under the same brand or no like same group so it's completely a part of the business is sold off to another company which is outside the group and then we have equity carve outs so which is a sale of equity interest in a subsidiary to public investors that is not releasing the ipo and for this the company has to be a public limited company and we have seen we have minority carve outs majority carve outs so minority carve outs no when a minimum number of shares no like less than the Madam. uh yeah Uh, the slides are not visible yeah yes i know like uh, the coaster has disabled okay one second let me try it one more time 
Okay, let's keep on going. Okay, then we have now like minority car vote and no majority car vote. So minority car vote is something. Okay, is it visible now? Yes, yes. Okay, good. So minority car vote is you now like where the minimum number of shares, you know, like less than 50% is being you no know, released as PO and majority car out is you no know, like where more than 50% of the company's share is released as an IPO. So who is going to get this you no know, like by this IPO is you no, know, it can be the other agency or another company or another biofirm or it can be individuals as well. So we have seen the advantages and disadvantages. And then uh, we have spin-offs. Okay, spin-offs is a kind of a demerger. That is distribution of the subsidiary stock to the parent company's existing shareholders. That is the subsidiary. That is not a parent company. So under the parent company, there are many subsidiary companies. So all are working under one group. So either of the subsidiary stock is being, you know, like... Uh, distributed to the parent company's shareholders in the way of dividend. So this is the spin-off tool. And um, then we have uh, we have seen the advantages and disadvantages. Okay. And then is the spin-in. Spin-in is you know, like something which allows the parent company to implement group-wide restructuring by streamlining overlapping businesses and redeploying assets and capabilities within the group. It is not like it's not to the someone no, who is not like outside, but within the group. So these companies are making majority owned subsidiaries into the only owned subsidiaries. Then split off and split up. Okay, so split off is a variant of spin off. So in split off, parent company distributes shares it owns in a business to its shareholders in exchange for the shares of the parent. So what happens is this parent company becomes the only owned subsidiary or only owned parent company and split up is something it's a form of split off where the parent company is broken up into two or more independent companies so parent company itself is not like broken up so here the merger no like um we have no like seen here okay spin off no like it's like a no like demerging that is not like even if the Spin-off is happening, the parent company still exists. But in no like uh, the split up or no like, uh, yeah, in the split up uh, process, split up technique. So the parent company is itself no like broken up into two or more independent companies. So everything now it's a no like individual, no individually operating businesses. So there is no, uh, no like room for parent company here. Okay, so this is what we have seen no till last week. So we are going to see the remaining uh, three or four more techniques before no, the end of the session. Okay. So the first one being the corporate splits. So corporate split is again a type of a split off that is split up. That is, the, it's a procedure makes it easier for the companies to split businesses units into new companies or existing companies. So either no, like these businesses can be sold that is a parent company can be you know like split into two or more and you no know, like just that can be sold to another existing companies whether you no know, like as a merger or as a you no know, like a acquisition it can be sold to the companies or these new split up companies can become a newly emerged company so either way it's possible so prior to the introduction of the corporate split procedure, it was possible for a company to split a business unit into new subsidiary. So prior to the introduction of corporate split, before this technique came into existence, so previously splitting up the business unit into a new subsidiary and having the parent company, so that was no like possible. But however, the traditional methods to complete such transactions were expensive and time-consuming procedures. But the cost involved in that particular, no, implementing that particular technique, that was no like, uh, it was no like highly expensive and no like time-consuming as well. So it's not easy for a company to go off with the, not to go on with the uh, split up or split off. So it requires no like some extensive procedures. So. The parent company has to wait for some more time, no, like uh, before, no, 
going on with this uh, type of the restructuring technique. So there are possible, you no, know, there was a possibility, you no, know, like before this can be executed, the parent company may face the insolvency, you no, know, and it can be, you no, know, like it can become the it can become completely obsolete. So this was the scenario before, but because of this new concept of corporate splits, which is you no, know, like very famous in you no, know, like countries like US and you no, know, like uh, European countries and all, and also this is you no, know, like. Very, very, very casual this is corporate splits. Okay, so the corporate split, which does not involve the distribution of shares directly to shareholders of a transfer or company and enables the parent company to focus on core business. So it doesn't involve in the distribution of shares to its shareholders. Here, the company is completely you know, split into equal and the shares are being divided into, you no know, divided equally and you no know, the shares goes to the, the new split up companies. So here, the shareholders doesn't get anything in the form of dividend, you no know, like or in the form of you no know, like profit return. So now the company can you know, focus on the core businesses because now the uh, extensity, you know, that has become, you no know, like decreased. Now it is you now decreased into a smaller unit. So now they can focus on the core business. Improves the control span of the parents' management team by reducing parental involvement. So now these split up companies, you no, know, they can individually work on their own core businesses because you no, know, the involvement of the parental company, you no, know, like that is being, you no, know, like completely avoided. Accommodate differing personnel and compensation system. So whether it's you not know, like acquiring new employees, you not know, like acquiring new machineries or new production system or new businesses, whatever, these new split up companies, you no, know, like they can do it on their own without the, uh, you know, like um, the involvement of the parent company. At the same time, such splits enable a parent company to unlock the value of a business unit by Clarifying the business unit's responsibility and authority. So here the clearly, you know, like every split up company and the parent companies knows their own responsibility and authority. So no one is going to you know like a barge into the other ones, you no, know, like internal affairs, other companies' internal affairs. So that is not going to happen. Providing a certain degree of autonomy to foster an independent culture. So since they are independent now, they can you know like function autonomously, expediting the business unit's decision-making to improve business performance. Now, business unit's decision-making, the decision-making process can be, you know, like quickly made. It can be expedited. They don't have to wait for the approval of the parent company because now the parent company doesn't have, you no know, like any involvement with the new split-up company. So once the split-up has happened, now the new split-up company is a separate entity. Enhancing visibility for customers, suppliers, and potential alliance partners or buyers. So more significantly, corporate splits facilitate the participation of strategic partners who can provide necessary capabilities. So it can you no know, like uh, uh, give way to you no know, like um, new leaders because you no know, now the companies split into you no know, like two or more uh, uh, companies that is you no know, like smaller companies. So new leaders can you know like emerge and you know like new concepts can be built up and new businesses can be you know like uh, found and run and new merges can be done, new acquisitions can be done by these small split up companies. They can take their own decisions and that can be you know like the decisions can be you know like immediately implemented without you no know, waiting for the parent company's approval. Okay, the next technique is tracking stocks. So tracking stocks, you know, like it's a class of a parent company, common stock, that provides a return to investors linked to the performance of a particular business unit within the parent company. So first, let's understand what is a tracking stock. So it's a, uh, a kind of, you know, like equity, you know, and which is offered by the parent company. It's a kind of equity. So the parent company will be having you no know, like n number of equities with that. So a particular equity of that parent company is you no know, like issued by that parent company, and you no know, that equity can be you no know, like uh, can be sold or it can be transferred to a you no know, like a division of the company. 
so for example the company parent company is you know like running five businesses or no running five business units either five different businesses or have five business units so take you no know, like a, a a particular business you no know, one among those five business can be an equity to them so that equity is you not know, like completely sold off or it is you not know, like completely transferred to the division of the company that is one of the split up company so in this way but here the unique thing is the shareholders doesn't get anything out of it because you no know, like this is to boost the new split up company to become a wholly owned uh, entity so they are going to you know like uh, make this newly split company grow up in the industry so for this reason the equity is completely either shared or transferred to the newly split company or the equity is sold and the cash value is given to the newly split company so in theory tracking stock can create many benefits for both the parent company and the subsidiary so either you no know, like both of them are getting uh, you know benefited out of a tracking stock does not require the parent company to make the tax legal governance and organizational changes required for an equity carve out or spin off so none of these techniques no the parent company no like uh, has to use so they are no like completely no like they are going with the split up no split pro process which is very much easy it's a kind of a corporate split but in corporate split no like the shareholders get their no like shares and the form of you no know, like uh, split up companies so once the parent company is split into fewer companies so each shareholder can get their own part of the split up company they are not getting the shares they are not getting dividends but they are getting new companies in their name but here so here the shareholder is you no know, like na getting nothing you no know, like out of this because the total equity you no know, like a part of the equity of the parent company is sold or you no know, like completely transferred to the new split up company so no separate board of directors is required because you no know, there is no uh, uh, you know like there is no need for that so this provides the main appeal to the parent company over other alternatives so tracking stocks are often terminated when the circumstances and objectives of the business or parent company change and consequently the parent company decides to sell spin off or spin in the track business so what happens this tracking stocks you no know, like sometimes gets terminated and it's completely dependent upon solely you no know, like uh, dependent upon the uh how the parent company is you no know, like function so if they are you no know, like uh, they deciding to you know go for a sell off or a spin off or you no know, spin in or the you no know, like tracking stock whatever it is you no know, like then you no know, like tracking stocks can be terminated so there is there is no need for you no know, like implementing this technique so other than this tracking stock they can go for the other options so let's see the advantages and disadvantages the parent companies let's see the advantages no first parent company continues to control the business unit and maintain ownership of its assets so even though the split up has happened it is just a subsidiary not a complete split up so it's a subsidiary where the equity is no like being no like uh, that is not a part of a stock no like it's being no like uh, sold or completely transferred to the new subsidiary company but still the parent company holds the new subsidiary company so they parent company takes the decision and parent company implements everything in the new subsidiary company or if the leader of the subsidiary company that is either it can be the president or the no manager or whatever whomever it is so if they want to go on with implementing a decision they have to get approval from the parent company so a tracking stock can raise capital on attractive terms because now there is no two different uh, not different but two entities under the same banner so they they can generate more profit and a publicly listed tracking stock establishes a market value for the business to which management compensation programs can be tied that is no like both can go with ipo option so imagine no the parent company is a public limited company which can no like very well go with the ipo option and no they have given no like 
through the way of tracking stock, they have formed a new subsidiary company and you now they have sold a part of their equity or a stock to, you know, like um, to give the enough resources for the subsidiary company. Now, this subsidiary company, though operating under the parent company, they can also go with the IPO option. A tracking stock preserves the operating benefits of a single integrated corporation and parent company may use the tracking stock as an acquisition currency. So it's a kind of an acquisition currency. Now, any time that the parent company wants to acquire that the subsidiary company, they can know like very well go on with it. So anytime now it's their own asset because it's not completely split off. Still the subsidiary company runs under the parent company. So once the subsidiary company is you know, like doing good, well, once it has started seeing the profits, generating the revenue and everything, anytime the parent company can take over the subsidiary company under its banner. So the disadvantages, the parent company issues a tracking stock must create financial firewalls between the business and the rest of its operations. So there must be a financial firewall. That is not that the uh, cost, the finance cannot be divided no, once the split up uh, has happened. That is once a subsidiary has no like uh, uh, has happened. So now uh, whatever comes to the parent company, that goes to the parent company. And whatever you no know, like cash flow or revenue comes to the subsidiary company, that can be operated only by the subsidiary company. And parent company, they can't take that cash reserve or the revenue from the subsidiary company's profit. So that should be a, a financial firewall. So each, either of them you know, should be knowing. So what is their, you know, like on what terms they are you know, like working on. The parent company will shoulder the administrative burden in connection with the tracking stock. Obviously, you no, know, like they have the higher responsibility, so they have this administrative burden. A company that issues a tracking stock creates a potential for a conflict at the board level between the interest of the two sets of shareholders. So whenever there is a decision-making process, obviously the board of directors you know, like come together and have a meeting. And either of them, you no, know, like, will be having their own, you no, know, like, um, ideas, and they would be having their own decisions. So obviously, there is a uh, no, like, room for clash. So it happens, you no, know, like, but things have to, you no, know, like, uh, balanced in such a way so that, you no, know, like, uh, uh, it doesn't lead to, uh, you no, know, like, a complete corporate split. So still the subsidiary company is no under the parent company's guidance. So it shouldn't become a complete split. So the, uh, you know, the employees or no, the, the executors who are responsible no, for uh, these decision makings and no, like, uh, like uh, who are responsible to handle these kind of no, like situations and no events, they have to no take the problem no handle the situation no in a gentle way or in a no like diplomatic way so that no like the clash doesn't lead to any dispute so uh, investors may not give as much value to the tracking stock as if shares represented a direct ownership interest in the assets of the track business so investors no like um, they won't give a much value to the tracking stock because now like this tracking stock has been you not know, transferred to the subsidiary company. So they investors will always be more focused on the parent company because you now that is the bigger unit. Still it's existing and still there's no tracking stock. No, like uh, who, uh, I mean, who got the tracking stock here is the subsidiary company. So it's still they are operating under the parent company. So the investors will be more interested in the parent company only, but not in the subsidiary company. And the last technique for restructuring is joint ventures. So when well-crafted, joint ventures can achieve many of the same objectives for the parent company as an acquisition of other companies. So you might have heard this word joint ventures. So you know, like um, integration of you know, like two different companies joining hands together, and you no, know, like uh, coming up with a new product or service or you no, know, like uh, a new business enterprise. So here the share that is the investment in the new enterprise, you no, know, like 
that can be decided by these joint ventures. So, for example, company A and company B, or you no, know, like coming together and you no, know, like uh, uh, planning for a joint venture, and you no, know, like they have come up with a company C, a new company called company C. So, who is going to have the maximum number of shares in the business? You no, know, it depends on how much you no, know, like A, the company A or B is you no know, investing in the business. So that can be you no know, like uh, before uh, you no know, like. Uh, uh, starting off the business that can be, uh, you know, like communicated, that can be, you know, like negotiated, accepted, you know, like, uh, and no, then they can start the, go on with the joint ventures. So it includes access to the resources and capabilities of the joint venture partner, but at a lower cost and without many of the risks associated with an acquisition. So either of them, no, like, or uh, eligible or, you no, know, like, have the, responsibility of using the common resources you no know, to the maximum level utilization of the resources and you no know, like uh, and other capabilities so that you no know, they can grow the business together that is not that they can develop the new company that is the company c you no know, like they can take it to a higher level consequently the parent can increase the value of the subsidiary by way of a gdp Successful JVs are often followed by IPOs. Now, this new venture, no new joint venture. So, if they have no like started working on the best no in the industry level, so now they can become and no like a, a public company kind of a thing, and they can now go for an IPO. So, like we we have no like known about many joint ventures, no like in the industry like Maruti Suzuki and no like many many joint ventures. So, in this way, no like they can go on with the business. So uh, when this joint venture usually happens is if either of the entity faces you no know, like a kind of a crisis. So for example, in the case of Maruti Suzuki, so Maruti was you no know, like uh, underperforming you no know, at, at a point of time. So somewhere in the you no know, like uh, mid, uh, I think you no know, like 1980s or uh, 1990s, I think so. So they were not no like up to the par. No, by the time no like uh, the other um, companies no like they were doing no like uh, far better. So Maruti decided no like they have to come up with some new idea or concept for that. They need some new technology you know to be you no know, like given to the uh, you know the users of our country, the uh, you know like the digital users. So then this new technology for you no know, like going on implementing you no know, researching and implementing with this new technology. So it would cost you know uh, you know like uh, an arm and a leg. That is no it's, it co it will cost more. So instead of you no know, like doing that, they thought you no know, like why don't we go, go with some joint venture kind of a thing, and you no know, like uh, who is already uh, know who already knows about that technology who has already who you know like have a knowledge about the technology so that they can uh, you know it utilize the technology and the knowledge and the resources and you know like money profit everything can be shared between maruti and the new joint venture that is no whoever is no like uh, ready whoever is no like ready to join hands with maruti so in that time suzuki came into the you no know, like rescue so both of them joined you no know, like hands together and now, like they came up with the new venture called Maruti Suzuki. So that's how, you no, know, like uh, somehow both were saved. Both were saved in the sense Suzuki, you no, know, like it was a uh, for them it was a grand opening, you no, know, in a country like India. And for Maruti, they they were able to, you no, know, like sustain in the business, you no, know, for a long time. So that's how, you no, know, like it was done. Okay, so joint ventures may be also used as a means of divesting a business. Obviously, that's a restructuring process. First step is to, it's the creation of a joint venture with a strategic partner. Often the strategic partner controls a major stake, most of the cases. That's what they say, over 50% in the joint venture company. So the second step is the acquisition of the minority shares of the JV company by the strategy partner. So it can be done if the you no know, like the the main company you no know, like who gives out majority of the shares has minor shares. So after some time you no know, like if that minor shares can be also you no know, like taken over by the 
uh, the new venture company by the strategic partner and no like they can decide on everything so such two stage transactions provide the acquiring partner with the benefits including the following a means to encourage the partner to assist in building the business a means to get to know the business before a subsequent acquisition and a means to lay the groundwork for smooth integration after a later acquisition so though they have started as a joint venture here uh, it means that after some time this joint venture that is the strategic partner can become no can acquire the uh, company who has no like uh, with whom they have no like uh, uh, joint hands with so that is the no like information they are giving here but it doesn't happen no in most of the cases sometimes no if uh, both the parties are not no like in good terms after some time or if the the strategic partner is trying to buy out no everything of the no like everything from the uh, company then no like the leaders of the company is not willing to do that they can any time they can no like break the contract and they can no like uh, operate as a single entity so that is also no like uh, uh, that also that kind of strategy or that kind of restructuring also no like prevails in the industry so buyer firms or active buyers of non core subsidiaries of large public companies so there are many you know, many buyer firms who are not like very active buyers and they always look for this non core subsidiaries of large public companies so although jvs are not traditional business model buyer firms may be interested in forming jvs so such buyer partnerships can be used as a means of divesting non core businesses when a cash sale is unavailable or undesired so this is a situation where no like that can happen so advantages so what is the no advantages a means to encourage the partner to assist in building the business experienced buyer firms can greatly assist in building the subsidiary recruiting the management team forming relationships with customers and setting business strategy so buyer firms invest cash into the subsidiary and assist in funding the business involvement of experienced and respected buyer firms may be significant asset to the subsidiary in a later ipo so these are the advantages so it can encourage its partner it can no like greatly assist in building the subsidiary it can invest cash into the subsidiary and no it can also no like um, uh, involved in the you no know, like giving you no know, like for like uh, sharing the experience you no know, to these buyer firms to, to these you no know, like uh, uh, to the firms you no know, who they have joined hands with and finally both can you know they can come up with an ipo as well that is the subsidiary it is a joint venture subsidiary can later come up with an ipo if it, if it is has become a successful venture so challenges you no know, like two challenges are here a buyer firm may not invest in an entity when the parent company is in control so when the parent company is still in control over the joint venture so buyer firm may not be interested at all so maruti and suzuki and if maruti says you no know, like i'll be the parent company always and you know, have to be my you no know, like my control suzuki is not going to accept it so it applies you no know, in vice versa as well and buyer firms are usually interested in executing an exit strategy within a reasonable time frame i think now they have no like the exited that is no like now maruti and suzuki you know like for few products or few uh, you know like technologies you no know, like now they are not operating together so initially they were you no know, like operating for all the you no know, like uh, uh, i mean uh, very few i mean for you no know, like more technologies together like you no know, like the engine and you no know, like um, something more but now you no know, they have limited their you no know, like uh, the joint ventures they have limited their you no know, like knowledge sharing they have limited their profit share so either of them you no know, have chosen the exit strategy so that's it and you no know, like i have mentioned few conclusions uh, you no know, like the final points which has to be remembered Uh, while going on with the corporate structuring the first thing being maintaining goals and objectives so that's the reason no for any corporate no restructuring process it's a no like a great tool for an organization so that no 
it always the company always maintains its goals and objectives or it can no like increase the uh, you know like uh, highlight their goals and objectives in the way of restructuring through their no like employees so they can no take it as a you know like um, a kind of uh, strategy as well and the second point is stabilize to stabilize its financial solution return to profit and focus on growth that is no like in restructuring is the process when the company uh, no like will go on no stabilizing financial situation they will no like plan to return to profit and then they focus on the growth so when restructuring is happening they will concentrate on the core business so once successfully it is performed they will focus on the growth to achieve value building growth companies must develop and maintain balanced business portfolio so it is very important for the company to build business portfolio to show them as a stronger company in the industry while restructuring is happening because it is no like subject to uh, you know like uh, all um, uh, you know criticisms and no like um, or condemns and no like in the point of a customer or in the point of the industry in the point of other stakeholders so that shouldn't happen so building a strong portfolio like announcing them showing them that they are no like the strong company now and they are no going with something a uh, restructure called the restructuring process to become a stronger company in the future so this is more important and the key challenge is to nurture growth options while diversifying underperforming or non core businesses proactively that is no like non core businesses no like uh, which is no like uh, all the non core businesses which is underperforming so that those things has to be divested that is no like those things has been no like either uh, you no know, sold off the organization sold off from the organization or it can be you no know, like um, in the way of spin off or you no know, like split up or in any of the technique restructuring technique it has to be you no know, like uh, given out from the organization so success in proactive divestitures a significant restructuring tool is more likely when companies use deliberately interim solutions to an eventual exit so before going for an eventual exit so a kind of a proper restructuring has to happen if the company's top management cannot manage the whole of the business operations they can split the company demerge the company into smaller companies smaller entities it can either be a completely different independent company the split the split up companies or it can be a subsidiary to the parent company then finally once the minority owned uh, no shares have become a majority owned shares now the parent company can go for an eventual exit and it has to lay the groundwork for creating a stand alone entity so organizations need insight into how to best utilize talent and find the best fit between existing employees and the job set alike then so during this restructuring process the employees may face you no know, like uh, all kind of you no know, like what you say uh, personal conflicts or professional conflicts between you no know, like interdepartmental conflicts may arise and interpersonal conflict may arise so it is the responsibility of the departmental heads or the top management to find the best talent retain those best talent in the company during the restructuring process and you no know, like existing employees no and the jobs that avoid them so so relate the jobs to the existing employees who are no much talented so related to the jobs so if uh, if you no know, like any job is not being related to a particular employee who is not skillful then the company can go go for you no know, a layoff kind of a thing or transfer that employee to another department or otherwise so during the restructuring process it is always best to retain the good employees working that is no committed employees in the organization restructuring initiatives fail when undertaken approaches are unrealistic so if your organization or if you as a business owner or taking unrealistic approach undertake any unrealistic approach then this restructuring will eventually fail so this process is an ongoing process so it is not going to happen just once in a you no know, like the 
company's lifetime. No, it is an ongoing process. So in few companies, no restructuring happens. No, every three years, every five years, every once in every ten years, fifteen years, it happens. So when the next generation, no, like takes positions, no, take top most positions, they go on with the restructuring. They want to change, no, like everything. They want to change according to the new trend or new fashion or something like that. And understanding the relationship between corporate restructuring and its employees is the key, not only to improving any organization's ability to move to change effectively, but to guarantee everlasting competitiveness. So to stay in the market, to become a competitive firm in the market, so this process is very much required. Organizations are encouraged to preemptively restructure. That is, go on with small, small changes before coming up with the large restructuring process. So make the people, make the system or make the, uh, you know, the employees uh, get access, that get, you know, like used to the changes. So first let them you know, get used to the changes and go on with the biggest change so that there may not be any, you know, like resistance happening from their side. The more extensive the restructuring, the greater the growth prospects. So. As you go for no more extensive restructuring. So here they are mentioning always better go for total organizational restructuring instead of no like just a financial or just departmental restructuring. That is what they are no like advising here. So go extensive restructuring, go for extensive restructuring so that no like the growth prospects will be great. The stronger the growth, the greater the need for restructuring. Continuous organizational learning is necessary for organizations to stay up to date and excel. So again, here it is being you no know, like reaffirmed that so organizations have to go for this restructuring as take this as a take restructuring as an ongoing process. So that should be a continuous learning. So and must be the essence of every restructuring. Organizations that are not willing to learn will become obsolete. So if you know, like, keep on postponing the restructuring process, fearing of something, fearing of, uh, you know, like obstacles you're going to face or fearing of the resistance you're going to know, like uh, uh, face from the, you know, like employee side or from your stakeholder side or fearing of, you know, like um, uh, losing the, you know, like business. So in these cases, it's not going to work out. So whatever the reason is whatever the situation is so it's always better to go for the restructuring process so that you can save the business for some time at least even if situations have become very you know like uh, uh, it has become very worse and you no know, like things cannot be you know like couldn't be handled you know like uh, uh, things are not like not under control then finally then you can go for an some eventual exit option, but before that, make sure uh, you have given your best to the organization by doing the restructuring process. At the end of the day, whether it is an organizational, financial, or portfolio restructuring, a successful corporate restructuring rests on human behavior. That is how the employees perceive the restructuring process, how much they accept it. Uh, what percentage of the employees know like resisted and how the organization is taking steps to make these resisting employees know like adjust to this restructuring process. A change in behavior. So the system has to be changed. So it can't be the same working style just like before. So once the restructuring has happened, the complete change in behavior in the organization, either it can be the organizational behavior or it can be the individual employees behavior that is professional behavior so that has to happen changing the belief system of the people of the organization and finally important uh, point is organizations must perform a restructuring audit so you might have heard about this you no know, like um, um hr audit operations audit uh, or you no know, like uh, this productions audit so this audit, no, like uh, usually audit will happen, no, like in financial departments, no, for tax filing and everything. But nowadays companies go for goes for departmental audits. So this audits can be conducted by 
टॉप टीम इन दी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विद इन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और दिस ऑडिटिंग यू नो लाइक वर्क कैन बी आउटसोर्स टू एन एक्सटर्नल एजेंसी हु आर एक्सपर्ट्स इन ऑडिटिंग so you don't have to be a ca or no like a, a kind of a no like um, what do you say you no know, like a technical professional to perform an audit uh, you know like even if you are an agency or you work for a company who normally performs you no know, like management audits or departmental audits so all you have to know is know about the procedures and everything you have to have some you no know, like a good qualification kind of a thing now this has become you no know, like more uh, uh no like this is another no a kind of role no which is no like happening in industries right now so a demanding role actually no like um, auditors that is no departmental auditors or restructuring auditors business auditors no like so they are in demand actually so organizations must perform a restructuring audit on their businesses periodically so this auditing what it does is Which they will check whether restructuring is necessary for the organization. So, if it is necessary, they will decide what kind of restructuring is necessary, whether it's financial or organizational or portfolio restructuring. So, whether it's for financial, what ah uh, you know, like what things has to be you know like taken into consideration, or if it is an operational ah uh, sorry the operations ah uh, the overall operations portfolio sorry restructuring. then they have to know like uh, uh, work out on uh, how to start with where to start with and know when to finish it everything so once this auditing audit is done then the uh, you know team has to submit a report to the top management that you know like a, a, a complete you know like information uh, on you know like how this has been you know like done and are uh, looking for opportunities to create value by voluntarily restructuring before circumstances leave them with no choice so the final conclusion is restructuring is good for any organization so that's the end of today's session if you have any doubts you can stay back for 2 3 minutes or otherwise you can leave the session we will meet you in the next session so come on thank you yeah thank you madam thank you thank you ma'am